All right, folks, it's JR here, the driveway engineer, and today we want to take a look at how and why I put my wastegate onto my turbo exhaust housing. So here you can see the finished product and how it lines up on the truck. Up next here is where I originally cut the hole, and I used a Hitachi carbide-tipped hole saw. It's 2-inch diameter. I got it off eBay for like 12 or 13 bucks. It wasn't very much money. Um, I threw that in the drill press at work and was able to cut that hole pretty easily. After I had the hole cut out, I put it in a bridge port and used an end mill to take the center out. And then I went ahead and put a one and a half inch schedule 10 pipe in it I'm sorry, Schedule 40. It's an inch and a half Schedule 40 pipe that I set in there. And it actually filled up the hole pretty good with the wall thickness. So here you can see where I've already welded the V-band flange onto my little piece of stub pipe. What that allowed me to do was get that flange. It, it was just easier for me to weld to that little scab piece. I'm not a real accomplished welder. So it was easy for me to weld to that little pipe and get that out away from the housing so that I could have a clean point for my flange to hook to. Now we're into some video. Um, I, I had the phone in my pocket and I didn't really want to video it at work. Uh, I work in a stamping plant. I mean, I work in the office, but out here on the floor, it's loud as can be. So there's absolutely no way you would have been able to hear any audio. Plus, I still feel a little awkward filming and talking. I, I do all right when I'm sitting here in the living room with Peanut, but um, everybody out there would have looked at me like I was nuts while I was doing this. So you can watch me struggle with the uh, oven here. Our tool and die makers use this to preheat pieces of the dies so that they can weld to them. So this is basically like a kill and it's just on all day at 900 degrees. Um, Somebody asked me how I knew to go to 900 degrees. I didn't. That's just what the oven's at. It was actually at like 961 or something like that. I left it in there for 15 minutes. I'm not sure that it reached full temperature. Exhaust gas temperatures tend to sit around about 1,000 degrees on a gas engine. Um, you might go up as high as 1,100. And, of course, you can drop down to pretty low, but... Right around 1,000 degrees as a rule of thumb. I mean, th this is, I guesstimated this, you know, to be honest. Basically, I got it used to the idea of being hot. So, it's already kind of where it's going to be when I welded it. Now, I use 308 filler rod here, and Google and all the weld professionals will tell you you should use 309, and you probably should if you have it. But I did not. I tried to buy 309 rod three separate times on Amazon. And they kept sending me ER70 rod. So they'd send me ER70 rod and I'd send it back. I'd have to go all the way to the UPS store, you know, 20 minutes out of my way. Downtown Grand Rapids at work. And I'd order it again. They'd refund me and I'd order it again and they'd send me more ER70 and, and I went back to the UPS store again and it was just a debacle. So by the time my wife called and complained and they said, well, you can just keep the... Uh, I, anyway, I used 308. 308 is more stainless. 309 has more ferrous metals in it and it's four joining dissimilar rods. You can see here, I have my little scab piece um, ready to go and I dropped it in there uh, anyway 309 has more ferrites in it and it is it's four mixing metal types um, and if this were welding to code if I were in engineer role here I would say you know that this is no good but in reality role in JR the driveway engineer if it doesn't crack down the middle immediately it's not going to crack and it's fine so I was able to weld this up. Uh, I think the whole thing only took me like four or five minutes. I weld it. It's on 100 amps. It's an old giant Miller. Um, I, I cranked it all the way up to what it would do, and I bottomed the pedal out. I, I got this thing 
as fucking hot as you can get it. So, it is fully fused. I mean, it's, you know, eighth inch wall, and then, I don't know how thick the turbo housing is. Surprisingly thick, though. And I will say that this turbo housing, you can see how hot I got it here. I will say that this turbo housing machine really, really well. But uh, a ton of oil came out of it when I heated it up, which is kind of weird. And now it's all stained and discolored. But I guess that would have happened the very first time I ran it anyway. So it really doesn't make much of a difference. So end result, this is what we wind up with. Um, nice and flanged. And I left it under a turbo blanket for about two hours and let it cool. And here it is with the wastegate on it. Um, sitting on the trash can outside, which is also my workbench. I let it cool for about two hours. There it is under the hood of the truck. And you can see now why I might want to do that. I have plenty of room. I can run it right back into my exhaust to recirculate it right into the downpipe right there. Um, I didn't have to do anything, go to any great lengths for that, so... I think it should work out pretty good, but only time will tell in the end. Uh, but yeah, there's plenty. You know, you, you're probably if you're watching this channel, you're all familiar with Sloppy Mechanics and Matt Happel, and you know he has one. Uh, I think Cameron Powers has one. There's a bunch of people out there running around with these, and some t people have two or three of them on their turbos. So, you know. We'll see, but it definitely makes packaging easy and everything. And uh, hopefully this helps you do it if you're interested or answers any questions you have. So until next time, this is JR. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you later. Thanks for watching.